Good morning, church. Our scripture this day comes to us from the Gospel of St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 13. A familiar scripture, that vivid story of the, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Hear the word of the Lord. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village near, called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stopped and stood with their faces down, and one of them named Cleophas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth? He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of our women went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it was just as the women had said but they didn't see Jesus. He looked at them and said, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. While they were at the table, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while we talked with him on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. They found the eleven, and those with them assembled together, and they said, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to us. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized to them when he broke the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God, and thanks be to God. For these last 25, 26 days, we've had a very different kind of way of life. We have been quarantined. Now that's meant different things to different people. The gold star people have not been out of their homes in 25, 26 days. The bronze star people, I'm sorry, the silver star people are those that make that one trip a day to work and back. Then there were the bronze star people that we go out when we absolutely have to go out but we don't make any more trips than necessary. And even if we want to go somewhere, where would we go? We can go for groceries, we can go for gas, we can go for medicine, and we can go do pick up food. Now none of those are exactly exciting places to be, but it's been a very different kind of existence. And it has been frustrating, and it has caused anxiety among us, but it is a very different kind of living. We find ourselves wondering what to do with our time. 
And one of the amazing parts of this quarantine is how we've been able, or at least I've been able, to see God's creation in a different way. Have you realized the beautiful song the birds sing every morning, very early every morning also, I might add. But it's beautiful. They just absolutely chirp away like they don't have a care in the world. And then in the evening, they have this nice like lullaby song that they're saying good night to each other and, and to their creator, God. Not something I paid a whole lot of attention to before quarantine. And it just seems that all of God's creation is so much more vivid. The trees that are coming back into bloom and the flowers and even the weeds you notice more in your yard. And the clouds and the, sun and the sky. The other night I was sitting on the back porch with Gracie and it had been a yucky over overcast day and suddenly I noticed the clouds moving and when they moved what came through but the beautiful Son of God just shining so bright not something I probably would have even noticed prior to our quarantine we've had to find time things to fill our time we found that things that needed to get done around the house are suddenly getting done we're cleaning more. We're throwing away stuff. We're kind of downsizing a little bit. We're enjoying activities that we haven't enjoyed in a long time because we didn't have time. Our lives were so rushed and our lives were so scheduled and now our lives are anything but scheduled. What are you doing tonight? Same thing I did last night. Listening to music and probably playing a game on Facebook because quite frankly I find nothing on television to really interest me. We've had time to do all kinds of activities and I pray that for you that has included time to be in God's Word and time to be in prayer and time to just be in the presence of God. We've sort of been given a whole new kind of sight. Our eyes have been opened to the beauty of God around us. And that's very much what we find in today's post-resurrection scripture. It's that wonderful, beautiful, vivid story from only Luke. When two disciples are going home from Jerusalem, they've been there for Passover. And this was the Passover of all Passovers because it was the Passover where Christ was crucified. And it's a seven mile walk and as they walk they talk to make the time go faster and suddenly they have this stranger with them who is no stranger at all, who is Jesus, the risen Savior, but because of the despair and the disappointment and the dread in their own hearts and lives, they fail to recognize him as Jesus. And as they walk, they say, what do you mean you don't know what's happened? You must be the only one leaving Jerusalem that hasn't been aware of what they did to Jesus of Nazareth. And they, re they replay the story for him. And he stops them and says, you foolish people. You fail to recognize what the prophet said about the one to come. And he starts with Moses and he goes through the prophets and he shows them how this all was God's plan, that the promised one would be handed over and would die and would rise again. And by this time they've gotten to that little village of Emmaus and Jesus is walking on and they say, no, 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 come and stay with us. It's almost evening. It's time for the meal. And so as Jesus sits at the table with them, Luke tells us it's when he takes the bread and he blesses it and he breaks it and he hands it to these two that suddenly their eyes are opened and it's no longer a stranger. It's Jesus, the risen Savior, and he's gone. 
And Cleophas and the other unnamed disciple get up and go right back to Jerusalem. Yes, it's late. Yes, it's dark. And no, there are no street lights. But they go back to Jerusalem because it's that important to share that Jesus is risen. And they tell the eleven of their encounter with the risen Savior. I think in many ways we're like Cleophas and his friend because we're discouraged, we're despairing, we're disappointed, and we're uncertain. Oh, in our heart and in our spirit, we know we have not been abandoned. We know that God is with us. But see, it's our human mind that we need to be concerned about because we are bombarded whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on Twitter, whether you have the television on, we are bombarded daily with coronavirus updates. And everyone changes from the one before. Which only adds to our confusion and our wondering. But we need to get past that human mind. We need to remember who we are. I posted, very unusual for me on a Sunday morning, but I posted on Facebook this morning, and what I posted was the Gaither Band doing the Church Triumphant. And if you know that song, and if you don't, go listen to it. It needs to be your theme song through this pandemic. And in the middle it says, God has always had a people. No matter what they've done to the church, no matter what they've tried to do to the church, no matter what they think they've done to the church, God has always had a people. A people that have stayed fastly connected to him. And that's who you need to be in this time. One of God's people. We're coming out of this, at least that's what I believe, but we hear questions like, well, how are we going to survive? How's the world going to survive? I'm not sure on that one, but I know the world will survive until God's ready for it not to. How will our country survive? Well, if we don't kill each other with the hate we have for each other, then we'll find a way. But how will you and I survive? How will we survive as a child of God? We will survive, survive with the power and the love and the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. He will carry us through. He is the risen Lord. He is the powerful one. How will the church survive? The church will survive when we become the church, when we keep our eyes focused upon the love and the grace and the power of our Lord Jesus Christ when we listen to what his direction is for the church in this time of pandemic. When we are able to block out what everyone tells us the church should or shouldn't be doing and when we only seek God's direction. That's how the church will survive. I worry not about our survival because I want to look ahead. I want to look ahead at what will we be after the pandemic. How are we going to come out of this? Are we going to come out of this just saying, thank God I survived? Or are we going to come out of this knowing that we've been given a new vision, a new sight, just like those disciples on the road to Emmaus were given new sight when they recognized Jesus. How will you come out of it? How will I come out of it? Quite frankly, that's our own choice. And the choice is this. We can continue to look backwards and be fearful and be filled with anxiety about what might happen again. Or we can be like Cleophas and the other unnamed disciple and we can run ahead and tell the story of how God brought us through the pandemic, what we saw in God's creation during the pandemic, how we've been given a new sight. We can come through this with renewed belief, with deeper conviction, and with new stories to tell. But that choice will be ours. Whether we continue to be the fearful people that the world truly wants us to be, 
or whether we can be God's chosen people, the church triumphant, the church with new in, with renewed energy and a renewed message. God's always had a people. God will always have a people. When a river is forced to, to flow underground, it doesn't lose its power. It flows until it's ready to burst out in a new way with renewed vitality and renewed energy. We've seen the risen Lord. Do we stay hankered down when we're able to be out? Or do we have renewed energy and renewed strength and a renewed belief that God has always had a people and I am one of them and I have a message to tell. The pandemic will end and each of us will go forth. We can go back to our normal life scheduling every moment of every day so we don't have to worry about our spiritual health, our spiritual life. Or we can remember that when we sit still, God has much to teach us. God has much to show us because God has much for us to do. Amen. Prayer concerns today, I share with you, Chuck did well with his chemo, um, he's tired, but he did not get sick, so that's a blessing. Everyone else is fairly well. Ed Guest has pneumonia again, so I would ask that you would keep him in your prayers. And happy birthday, Ed. It's a couple days late. Um, as far as I know, those are our concerns. We're all concerned for our brothers and sisters, and I encourage you to check in on each other. This has given a renewed... Um, Appreciation for simple phone calls or notes or even text messages, and we need to be a part of that. But as we end this message for this week, I encourage you to listen to that, that um, song. I encourage you to, to make a new, renewed commitment to be a church, part of that church triumphant because God has always had a people, and we want to be that people. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for this day. The day is not the way we would have it to be. Life is not the way we would plan it right now. But you see, God, none of that matters because you still sit on the throne. You hold us in the palm of your hand and you speak to our very spirits. We pray that you'll continue to be with Chuck and with Debbie and that you would continue to be their strength and that you would help Chuck's body to continue to, to tolerate this treatment. But help them to know how loved they are, to feel surrounded by that love. And for Bobby and Ed, dear God, we ask that you would touch his lungs and you would clear them and that he would be able to, to move from this again back into to a stronger state physically. And gracious God, we know that there are requests that we're not aware of, but you are. And so right now in this quiet time, just let your Holy Spirit search our hearts. Take our concerns. Take our anxiety. Take our despair. Fill us with the joy of the risen Lord. Help us to remember that I can do anything through Christ that strengthens me. Let me go forth into this week with my eyes not downcast, but my eyes looking to the heavens, looking around my world to see your presence and to be filled with your peace. We ask all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, who taught us when we pray that we should say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be safe. Live as a child of God, filled with that joy. Amen.